Welcome back, Geico Outkick Studios. We have a great podcast called Wins and Losses. Yesterday, I sat down with Grant Napier, who is the longtime television announcer with the Sacramento Kings, also did local radio for 26 years. He was fired for back on, in late May, he tweeted out, uh, all lives matter, every single one. And within 48 hours, he had lost his job. Uh, It is kind of wild. It's an amazingly ridiculous cancel culture story. And we had a longer form conversation about his career. But also, I wanted to play that particular aspect of our conversation for you. And I think you will enjoy it. Here that is starts now. In the space of 48 hours, after you send a tweet that says, All Lives Matter, every single one with three exclamation points, you lose your entire career. What was the private reaction? You know everybody. You know a lot of people really well in the NBA with the amount of time that you spend in the league. Coaches, players, uh, executives. What was their private reaction versus what the public reaction was? Because I can give you what I bet the answer is. I bet privately a lot of people said this is very wrong. I bet publicly very few of them said it. You are 100% correct. Uh, privately, I've kept every single voicemail. I've kept every single text message. I have uh, kept a diary of every single person that called me. And privately, the reaction was unbelievably supportive. Uh, former players, uh, some current players, former coaches, former executives, um, I can go on and on. Many, 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 many of my colleagues around the NBA, both local and national announcers, uh, I, like you, have developed you know, quite a bit of uh, contacts through the National Football League and the National Hockey League. I received calls from people in no sports. Uh, privately, it was absolutely unbelievable it was uh, incredible publicly because everybody was so scared of losing their jobs or being labeled there was nothing publicly there was nobody and i had i had so many of my colleagues call me up and say grant i can't believe this this is so wrong and they would say i just want you to know i can't say anything publicly and i would say i get it I completely understand. You don't want to be labeled. You don't want to lose your job. You're fearful. Uh, you're, you're, you can't you can't speak how you honestly feel because if you do, the same thing's going to happen to you that happened to me. And so publicly, it was silent, just absolutely silent. And that's what's so overwhelmingly staggering about cancel culture in general is almost everyone knows it's wrong. And yet people are so afraid that the mob is going to come after them that they're not even willing, by and large, to speak out and say this is wrong, right? Because they're afraid that they're going to be the next target, which is how these mobs get their power. It's fear, right? It's fear that is overwhelming. This is, this is why I think this is a significant conversation we're having because your story comes in sports, But there are a huge percentage of people out there. And by the way, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, gay, straight, religious, not really, doesn't really matter. There's a huge percentage of the American population that lives in fear that they are a Facebook message, an Instagram message, a tweet in your case, away from losing everything. You had 32 years of television games to your background, 26 years of radio, and sending all lives matter, every single one, you lose all of that within 48 hours. Yeah, and I can't speak specifically about my departure with the Kings, but what I would say is that I had many conversations with colleagues that are currently broadcasters in various sports, and they would call me up and we would speak for an hour, and they would go, Grant, I am so nervous to go on the air. Yeah, I'm afraid of saying the wrong thing. 
I'm like, you're kidding me. And they go, no, I'm really, these are, these are people that have been doing this for, for 15, 20, 25 years. I was having a conversation with professional broadcasters yes. and Clay, you know, this, when you, when you're on live, you're on live, you, you know, everything's spontaneous. Like I don't have a script. I'm not writing things down. I'm just spontaneous when I talk on the air. And I have, and when you're announcing a game, you're, 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 you're ad living the whole game. You don't, you don't have time to look, you're not writing anything down and then reading it when you're broadcasting a live event. And I would have, my colleagues go, man, I'm really nervous. I'm nervous about going on the air and saying something that I shouldn't, even though it would be innocent. And I'm thinking to myself as I'm talking to my colleagues, how awful is this that we live in a society now in 2020 where you have to be now paranoid about going on the air because you're afraid that you're going to say something that's going to be misconstrued. I mean, how sad is that, Clay? It's terrifying. I mean, and, and I think it's also emblematic of larger issues. Look, I don't care about anybody's politics. I came out and said I was voting for Donald Trump. And I said one reason I voted for Donald Trump was because I am completely opposed to cancel culture. And I see cancel culture continuing to get more and more control in this country on a day-to-day basis. Grant, the number of people in my industry, I just want you to think about this for a minute. I am on air on Fox, uh, Fox FS1 on television daily. I am the only person at Fox Sports, at CBS Sports, at ABC slash ESPN, or at NBC Sports that I'm aware of that is an employee that goes on the air and talks about sports who has said that that he or she is voting for Donald Trump. Only one, right? 70 some odd million people voted for the president of the United States. Maybe Joe Biden is going to be the next president of the United States. That's fine. It doesn't really matter to me. Sometimes my candidates win. Sometimes they lose. But how crazy is it that no one else in all of sports is willing to say that they're voting for Donald Trump in my profession of sports media? I'm the only one. It's not because I'm the only one. You talk about the private conversations. When I said that I was voting for Trump... My phone blew up. People that all of you know that are listening to me right now, white, black, Asian, Hispanic, people who watch, you watch on television, you read, a ton of them reached out and said, I'm doing the same thing, but I am terrified to say it publicly because in our industry, I could get in trouble for having that opinion. And your opinion, all lives matter, every single one, that is supposed to be, the reason you're fired, I'm assuming, because people decided that was a racially insensitive thing to say. Is that right? Like that was uh, a one hundred percent sensitive, right? That's correct. Racially insensitive. That's that, I, I can only I can only guess that. How else could it be? I mean, all lives matter. Every single one. I, 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 you help me out here. How is that a racist comment? I mean, I, I, I don't understand that. I, I really don't. And I'll, I'll take that to my grave. All lives matter. Every single one is deemed by some as racist. You know, I still have people that reach out to me or strangers and they go, you still don't get it. And my response is, no, I don't think you get it. I get it completely. OK, I had my life completely turned upside down. I said, I don't think you get it when I have people say that to me. They go, Grant, you know, you still don't get or I see comments on whatever. And people go, well, gee, you know, I, I listen to Grant's podcast and he talked about this and boy, he still doesn't get it. And I go, no, you don't get it. I think I get it fine. I think I have a complete understanding. I, and I said this to my wife. And, you know, again, I, I'm not I'm not like patting myself on the back here, but this is how my family lives our life. My wife went to Zambia with a couple of ladies last summer for two weeks. OK, went to Zambia to help out women and children in that country and ended up having a phenomenal relationship with a lady over there and ended up having the lady come to California in January of this year and live with her sister for one week, and live with us one week, to show her the American culture, show her life in a different part of the country, and just like the experiences. that That's how my family lives. You know, I talked about my brother. I talked about my father. You know, not to get off on a tangent here, in 1963, my father um, got 13 busloads of people, okay? 13 busloads of people at the Community Church of New York to go to the March on Washington. All right. That, that's how I was raised. I was raised to preach equality. I was raised equality, equality, equality. I was raised to 
go out of your way, go above and beyond for the black community. You know, not no. You need to do more for the black community. That's how my dad raised us. And now I am losing my career because I say all lives matter, every single one, with the complete intent of every single one means every single race, black, white, Asian, Hispanic. You just mentioned them all. That's what's so appalling to me about not only my situation, but others that have been canceled that have the same viewpoint as me. Now, are there others, Clay, that have made comments like that are probably racist? Hell yeah. And if we, if we don't acknowledge that, we're being stupid and naive. But peel back the layers on each individual before you just totally cancel someone. I, that's the part that just is mind-boggling to me. So where do you go from here? Like, what happens now? Because I'm, I'm, I'm kind of utterly fascinated by a situation such as this that happens. You've obviously started a podcast. I believe you've moved out of Sacramento. Correct. What do you want? A big thing, obviously, in life is things happen and you continue to adjust your life as a result. What would you like for the result of your situation to be? I want my name cleared. That's what I want. I want my name restored. I, I, and I know that's never going to happen. And uh, I mentioned later. But that, matter, again, that matters a great deal to you that you, are, uh, that you have, uh, have been canceled and that many people are willing to believe that that's a justifiable reason that you were canceled for, that you're racist, that you're a horrible human being. And after 32 years of TV, 26 years of radio – that still hangs over you. That that is the number one thing that bothers you the most about losing your job. Absolutely, I'm one hundred percent. I told my I told my wife this. I said, you know, if if I'm a racist, I hope every white person in America is racist just like I am, because then racism won't exist. And that's how I feel. You know, I, I want my name restored, uh, for, but by those that do use the term racist. You know, Matt Barnes came out on Twitter, Matt Barnes, can you believe this? And said, I'm a closet racist. And yet this is the same guy that when he last played in Sacramento had a weekly show with me. He would come on my radio show every week and then ask to play in my golf tournament, which we raised the money to send our kids to college and spent $7,000 at our auction. OK, and yet I'm a closet racist and yet you're on the radio with me every week and you are playing in my golf tournament. I mean, what's I mean, I, I want I want my name restored. OK, I want and I and again, I know I'm being naive here, Clay. All right, because people are going to believe what they want. I know who I am. I have no problem putting my head on the pillow at night. I've lost my entire career. And the one thing I really hope is that this doesn't happen to somebody else. And it already has. But I'm really praying that. Other people don't have to go through what I went through because it's just flat out wrong. And it, I'm not having a pity party. I'm not, I'm not crying on your shoulder here. The reality is that what's happening in America in 2020 with cancel culture is just flat out despicable. It's absolutely wrong. Last question for you. DeMarcus Cousins, you said you didn't have a good relationship with you. Do you feel like he was trying to set you up to get fired? At the time, I didn't even think about it, but in retrospect, yes, because I think he knows enough about my background and what I believe in. He knows about my relationships with other players, which are very good, my friendships with other players. He used to see me hanging out with other players. Um, I can only say yes. I don't know. That would be a question for him. But uh, in retrospect, um, I think uh, he, and I haven't talked about this publicly until just now, I think um, DeMarcus Cousins, Matt Barnes, and Chris Weber ganged up on me. And I think that they had issues with what I said. You know, Matt Barnes and DeMarcus Cousins, we had a game that was postponed in Philadelphia because of condensation on the court. And they were seen in the locker room with a bottle of Hennessy, and they put it out on Instagram and social media. And I went on my radio show, and I said, how stupid is that? Why are you broadcasting that? If, you, if you're going to drink, drink, but don't broadcast it. And then sub, and then was a short period of time after they got into a brawl at a New York nightclub, and DeMarcus was on the sidewalk, unaware that somebody was videoing him on their phone, and he was bragging about the fight in the nightclub and how Matt Barnes had, you know, punched this girl. And, and I, so what am I going to go on the radio show and ignore that? 
And that's their way of getting back at me. And if you want to get back at me, that's fine. But don't call me something that I'm not. Those those individuals know who I am. They know everything about my background. Uh, and and, and, and how, what, how hypocritical is that? You're going to come on my radio show every week, and you're going to play in my golf tournament, and then because I said something bad about you? Clay, I don't know how you feel about this. We, as white broadcasters in America, should be able – to criticize a person of a different ethnicity and not be called racist, okay? I can't do my job properly if I'm on my radio show and I can't criticize a black athlete, a white athlete, a Hispanic athlete. That doesn't mean that I have bias against you. I criticize all races. I criticize athletes based on how they're performing or not, coaches, how they're doing, how they're not. It has nothing to do with their ethnicity. I don't sit there and go, gee, you know what? That individual is black, so let me rip him. Let me criticize him on the air. That never even enters my mind. That's not how I operate. But unfortunately, in 2020, if you're a Caucasian broadcaster in America and you criticize an African-American athlete, there are those that are automatically insinuating that you're racist. How awful is that, Clay? Seriously, how sad is that? Well, I think it just builds on identity politics in general, right? And, and, and this is, to me, why identity politics and cancel culture are in many ways connected because the goal of anyone, in my opinion, if you are in a business where you're looking and trying to, to decipher who's good, who's bad, and that's basically the, the opinion business of sports in general, right, should be to be as completely fair and transparent and equal to everyone as you possibly can be, right? And so this idea that we should have different standards for how we talk about people based on what they look like or based on their identity, things that they cannot control, is inherently at its most basic level racist, right? I need to be able to talk and you need to be able to talk, whether it's white, black, Hispanic, or Asian. Everybody has to be able to talk to each other as individuals, not as individuals who have an identity first, right? And so this is why my analogy has been that that I think is 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 interesting. I don't care. We, we see all the time now on television. People say uh, as a uh, as a Hispanic transgender woman, I believe. Right? People will say things like that. All of that I don't care about. Your argument is either good or bad based on the quality of the argument, not based upon the identity behind which you are standing. And I, I take it back all the time to yeah. it reminds me of royalty. If you remember, if you study history at all, people used to say they had the divine right of kings. And so people who were noblemen or people who were uh, in positions of prominence in Europe back in the days of feudal realms, they would say as the third lord, you know, Monteroy of the Mount Botten, you know, and the vice chancellor, of, they put all these huge list of uh, assignations before their name. And then they would say, I believe. Well, my thing is, I only care about the quality of your argument. I don't care about everything that you're using as justification for why your opinion matters. You either have a good opinion rooted in facts that sound and factual and and, and worthy of, of respect, or you have a bad opinion. And what you look like shouldn't impact what that opinion is. And so I think the identity politics era has created the cancel culture era. They're intertwined, and I think they're both, uh, frankly not popular, right? Because they all connect to the politically correct universe, which overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, a huge percentage of people of all different Mm. backgrounds reject them. And I like to think that at some point, cancel culture is going to explode and feed on itself. And uh, whether you're a comedian who people are going through and saying, oh, we can't make that joke, uh, or whether you're somebody going through and saying, oh my God, that tweet or that Instagram post or that... Facebook post. I don't know why the first response is we have to cancel this person. It doesn't make sense to me. Well, again, look at Jack Nicholas. I did a rant on this a couple of weeks ago. He comes out and say he's voting for Trump, and you, it, it was it was as if Jack Nicholas never existed, and people were killing him. I, I went on my rant and said, you know, I don't really give a damn who you vote for. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm a diehard New York Giants fan, season ticket holder. I don't care who the mayor and Tishes vote for. It makes no difference to me. I'm a fan of the team, but yet there are people out there that are just completely eliminating friendships, family members, over yes. who you vote for. I, I, it's mind-boggling. Not to get off 
Fran Tangent, but I watched what you said when you said you were voting for Trump. And what struck me so amazing is that you talked about who you voted for in previous elections, and I believe most of them were Democrats. And so you're, you're not just some guy that's on the far right, Republican, Republican, Republican. No, you're looking at each candidate, and you're voting for who you think is the best person for this country. I respect that. Even if I don't agree with it, I respect that. And for you to lay it out the way you did, and yet people still have a problem with that, that's sad. That's 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 wrong. It's just flat out wrong. And uh, I know a lot of I have a lot of friends that told me that they ended long term friendships because of who they were voting for. And I'm scratching my head and I'm like, I don't get that. You vote for who you want. I vote for who I want. We can have an adult conversation. And at the end of the day, I respect you. I sure as hell hope you respect me. And we move on and we put our arms around each other and we try to make our country better. Even if you are a Trump supporter or you're a Biden supporter, whoever you support, okay, at the end of the day, we're going to have a new president on January 22nd. And you know what? As Americans, we owe it to come together and try to make this country better. And that, that doesn't exist anymore. And that is a real sad indictment on our children and our grandchildren that are growing up. What kind of country are we leaving them? It's awful. It's terrible. That's Grant Napier. You can hear the entire podcast conversation, wins and losses. Just search out my name, Clay Travis. You won't miss it. 